that is important to present our work done together with Sven Schwab. It's unfortunately <laughs> not here. Um, yes. And in the first section, I would like to present to, 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 to give you an overview of our data and the creation process because we decided to use the data set we created automatically from public available data sources. And in the second section, I would like to get an overview uh, of our QA based extraction approach and to point out uh, a lot of challenges and, and issues we actually faced uh, because it was kind of proof of concept. Just a few words about the background, yes, because it's uh, definitely a question why don't we use uh, just a benchmark data set? Uh, so, the problem we try to solve, or we are trying to solve, <laughs> better to say, is uh, an extraction of information in this particular case of causality statements about events from um, very general defined a domain like every kind of news or something like that. And most of the data sets available on the topic are kind of uh, multiple choice. Yes, so you are given a text and a set of possibilities or uh, some opinions and you have to decide or your model have to decide uh, what's right from this, from this multiple choice task. Uh, so we came up with the idea to use a public available data source, Wikipedia, in this uh, particular case, a list of protests in the 21st century, because we are interested in the alarming events like riots, for example. Uh, and the advantage of the data is that we have kind of um, human annotations here. You can see on the right side, it's uh, called Infobox section on the Wikipedia page. And we can find from many of the articles, we can find the causes, yes. And we also can find these causes maybe paraphrased in the text. So we can construct a, a training or evaluation data set from this data. And that's what we actually uh, try to do. Uh, the data has some limitations, of course. Um, the annotations are maybe not very objective because Wikipedia authors may be biased. Um, they are also very, very different. So they may be long, short, and maybe, um, maybe like summarization or just bullet point lists and so on. They may be uncertain. So we had to deal with all this stuff. And uh, in the pre-processing, we yes, firstly tried to create a list of causes for the particular article. And we split the annotations by semicolon, comma, new line, top, bullet point, everything, uh, which of course, uh, in some cases, resulted in incomplete causes. So there were statements that are insignificant in terms of facility. But it's something you can then correct manually <laughs> if you have resources. Uh, so from this data, uh, we try then to create a data subset. Um, in this case, we wanted to use an extractive QA model, uh, which of course uh, implies that our, our expected answer should appear in the text because we can't ask the model to find something not existent. And uh, in this case, we try to find these annotations because they don't link, uh, they are not linked uh, to the text. We try to find them, they are paraphrased appearances in the text. And uh, yeah, here we used uh, uh, sentence uh, embedding based cosine similarity to find these matches, semantic matches. And then we included only the matches with similarity score set higher than 0 0.7. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, you, of course you can set the threshold higher and it would be, 
I think a better subset, but in this case, we tried it with 0 0.7. Um, yes, uh, just, uh, just a bit more details to, about the data set. It's a, a, an example how we, uh, how we proceeded here. Uh, we use sentence transformers. I'm not sure whether uh, Professor Irina Gurevich is here today, but she's she's giving a talk tomorrow, <laughs> and uh, she introduced together with a colleague uh, sentence transformers library. So we used models from the sentence transformers library to obtain uh, paragraph embeddings, sentence embeddings, and then to um, to compare them, uh, their semantic similarity using precise similarity with the actually annotated phrase. So in this case, uh, for example, media bias, uh, we are we were trying to find a similar phrase and then to adjust it, to expand or shrink it, and then we just chose the best phrase and stored it just like a best match. Um, Yes, and this resulted, uh, I'm sorry, I haven't included the statistic, this resulted in 905 poses related to about 300 articles. And um, 660 poses were matched similarly, so semantically, let's say, uh, and the rest, uh, so Yes, it's less than 30% were meshed exactly with the, with the appropriate annotation. Um, yes, um, here are the, the main pipeline steps we used. Um, our objective was to set up a kind of proof of concept whether, whether we can, can use a reading comprehension of a QA model or a pre-trained model uh, to extract uh, some causality statements. Um, so in the first step, we created natural languages, uh, uh, language questions, sorry, um, based on the available data, in this case on the article title. Um, in some real world use cases, we might have another information about the event, for example, type of event, or maybe something else where the event actually happened and so on. So we could use this information about an event to construct a question. Then we split the articles into smaller text messages to process them. And we again used the sentence transformers to match uh, whether the passage is relevant or not. So we extracted relevant passages. And then we used uh, a QA system uh, to extract answer candidates, false candidates, and finally, we evaluated these false candidates with uh, a few metrics uh, to find the best match. I will just skip that. So it's uh, the first stage of the of the extraction pipeline, message extraction. Uh, again, we just need the title in this case to create a question. We split our text and when, then we uh, take the embeddings from the sentence transformers models, compute similarity scores between these passage embeddings and question embedding, and then we choose the most similar, most relevant passages. And in the, in the second step, we again use our question with these passages to extract top uh, answer candidates, we rank them, and uh, in the next step, we try to match the answers with the true poses, with the ground truths, uh, in order to obtain the best match. Um, just a few words about evaluation metrics. Uh, we used uh, semantic similarity, again, using uh, sentence transformers model. We used F1 score based on uh, tokenized phrases, um, and we used the uh, exact match, which was, yes, uh, very rigid, of course. Yes. Um, a few points about evaluation. You can see here on the left side, in, in orange, it's uh, 
uh, here are the data set related columns. So the ground truth, what was annotated by humans, the best match, what could we find in the text, and the matching score is the matching score of these two. And on the right side, in, in red, here is the best answer. So the best match was found by a QA model. Uh, the score of this answer, that means uh, uh, how high was the probability that this, this was an answer. Uh, and then answer matching score refers to uh, similarity between the best answer and true code, so between what found our QA model and what was annotated by, by a human. And yes, exact match is just whether we had an exact match between true cause and best match in the data set. Uh, these examples were chosen to, to show some, some issues. Uh, you can see in the first case, uh, we actually uh, matched almost exactly the best answer with the true cause, it's just a comma. Uh, but our QA score is really, really low. So in the real world scenario, we would rely on the QA score and we would probably skip this answer. But in fact, it was right. And in the second, uh, in the second row, you can see that uh, actually um, the best answer could capture the main idea for our human judgment, but it received uh, a lower answer matching score than I probably would expect for my for my own opinion. And the third the third line, um, I just wanted to show you that we might get some results that are still meaningful for us, but yes, they don't match with the with the true cause, but they are still interesting for us. Um, regarding experimental settings, we had two settings on just a related document and then a mixed document, just to compare how the model performs if we mix up some different topics. And then we used just extracted question answering, so just split all the text into chunks and pass it into the model. And then with the passage extraction step. <clears throat> uh, and on the just related documents, uh, we uh, have these results. So it's relatively low, and we don't have a lot of exact matches. Uh, and question answering only performs slightly better, but insignificant. And in fact, uh, a good question would be what is a sufficient similarity of our uh, best best answer uh, with the true cause, yes. Because as we uh, we could see uh, some slides ago, <laughs> it would be sufficient to have this 40% in, in some cases. And on the mixed documents, uh, here we had a special case, no answer found, so no answer candidate found for three, yes, for three causes uh, when performing this uh, passage extraction step. So obviously a passage extraction uh, skipped some relevant passages. Um, here are some possible improvements, so let's say future work, we might uh, need uh, a better subset for the evaluation, or maybe we might weight uh, the answer cause similarity score by the matching score because, as I said, we don't have exact matches in all the cases, and we should consider it in the evaluation. Uh, we also should manually evaluate answers with high questions on question answering score because they still might be uh, meaningful for us. And uh, we definitely have to define this sufficient level of semantic similarity. Um, so, future work or conclusions uh, it's just a proof of concept that we set up. 
uh, and we are going to, to work on the topic further. And here are some sections where we see possibility for improvements. On the model side, we should improve our passage or sentence embedding, sentence embedding models uh, in order to capture the, the content. Uh, we might want to improve question answering models uh, in order to deal with this uh, particular topic uh, of causality. And last but not least, uh, generative methods might be better for this use case because uh, in fact, we want a kind of summarization of what caused some event. On the information extraction side, we might uh, try to improve some things uh, uh, regarding extraction strategy. Just increase number of messages, for example, uh, could bring us uh, improvements. Um, try another questions, uh, increase the number of possible answer candidates, and set some kind of question answer score threshold to to um, to rank the questions uh, to rank the answers. Um, I think also iterative storytelling. Let's say we try uh, to to begin with uh, one event and then to ask about the causes and then to ask about these events and so on would be very promising and as I said summarization. And yes, we could, as I said, improve the evaluation subset, use benchmark data sets uh, in order to evaluate our systems, use another metrics like MUSH, for example, for lexical overlap, and use P encoder models for semantic similarity. And as an underlying goal, we would like to move uh, towards zero short event reconstruction so, so we could try to ask what happened and where and why who was involved and so on. Thank you very much. Presentation. So it's your turn for questions. <laughs> okay, any questions? Oh, uh, so, uh, this was a very interesting talk and I think it was a very original approach. Um, I was wondering, uh, this F1 measure, measure 0.14, was done manually. So you have checked manually the answers, uh, correct? Not, not using the cosine similarity, etc. The F1 measure. I understand, no. Uh, the F1 measure was also computed automatically. Okay based on kind of back of words tokenized phrases. In fact, we should do some manual work to improve the data set and we should do some manual work to evaluate the approach. Okay. So there is hope that it is even better than this 0.14. So it's, it's, uh, it's automatic. everything automatically. Okay, so, so we can- No time and money for manual corrections. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question.